never really know our friends. Last year, when I was only 15, I thought I knew Cass as well as I've ever known anyone, as well as I knew myself. We'd been best friends since we were 10. We spent summers together, and she spent Christmas at our house the year her dad went nuts and everything. We've had more sleepovers than I can count. Our birthdays are only six days apart, so we had together parties most years. I'd say she was like a sister, but I have a sister. Cass was nothing like that. Cass was better. She was my best friend, practically my only friend. That's why I cried so hard the day I had to kill her. There's a crooked little house at the end of a dirt road, about 600 yards through swamp and bramble from the Canadian border. That's where I live. The closest town is 16 miles away. I've walked it four times in my life, and it's not too bad, except in winter when the dry, dusty snow blows like sand across the road, making it hard to see where you're going. Cass lived in town, in a big house on a busy street. That's where we met, all those years ago. Her house was a block down from the library. My mom took us to the library a lot. That's a juvenile book, not young adult. She'd spent a lot of time there, too. I'd seen her before. You probably want young adult. The day we met, she was volunteering. I remember thinking that was so weird. A ten-year-old volunteering. No, I want this one. Sit yourself, but the Nightwing series is better. My mother doesn't like adult themes, and I have to write book reports on everything I read. Have to or want to? Have to. We're homeschooled. Oh, then you want Christian fiction. It's along the back. I hated her at first. Not because she made the assumption that homeschoolers would only be interested in Christian fiction, but because she was right. My mother was really only interested in Janet Oak and junk like that. She told us we could read anything we wanted, but I knew the consequences of picking out the wrong thing. Well, if you're sure... I know you're mature enough to understand it. I just suppose you'll have to learn for yourself. That was my mother's way. Everything was educational in our house. Even passive-aggressive abuse was educational. But not long after that first day at the library, I started seeing Cass there every time we went. And we went three times a week, minimum. Finally, one day... Here, don't let your mother see it. What? I can't. It's checked into my car. Don't worry. This is a Richard Stride book. This has... There's a sex scene in this. Yeah, on page 237. Why are you doing this to me? All you check out is the kitty horror from Young Adult. Haven't you ever wanted to read something really scary? I didn't want to ask. Is this really scary? But it was out before I could stop it. I got hooked the night I finished it. Read the last 200 pages right in one go. Didn't sleep a wink. I I don't think I should. Yes, you should. And she thrust the book back in my hands. And I looked up at her. Her eyes were so big and beautiful. They were a dark shade of blue I'd never seen in something natural before. Only in plastics and dyes and some of the fabrics my mother used in her sewing. Dark, deep blue that seemed to draw you in. Yes, you should. Draw you in. That was the start of our friendship. Horror novels at the library. Our big secret. It seems kind of stupid now, looking back. I was the oldest of three. My sister Jane is two years younger, and our brother Bobby is four. That meant everything I did was a first time for my mother. She overreacted. A lot. I... I don't think so, honey. I don't think it's safe. And later? I... I'd rather you not. I'm, I'm not really comfortable with that. I'm not comfortable with that. The official slogan of our house. And that was the truth. That was what it was all about for Mother. Her comfort. She wasn't comfortable with me sleeping over at Cass's house. She wasn't comfortable with me walking to town. She usually gave in, I'll give her that. But it was never really acceptance. It was this begrudging giving in. Well, I suppose if you feel you have to. It wasn't at all like Cass's house. (laughs) (laughs) Oh. Or with Cass's parents, Harold and Madeline. First of all, they wanted me to call them that, Harold and Madeline. 
and even though I knew they were my mom's age, they seemed a lot younger. What's in a name? A rose by any other. Ah, my sweet. <laughs> hmm. Oh, you guys. Oh, we're embarrassing the youngling. Oh, she's 13. That's our job. <laughs> come here. <laughs> oh, if you guys are going to suck face, can Mary and I eat in the porch? Of course. Uh, none for Frodo, though. I know. Come on. Come on. We'll just sit in the right hand. No, Frodo. Sit. Your parents are so affectionate. Please, I'm trying to eat, Mary. Sorry. I just... How old are they? I don't know. Forties, I guess. Mm. I love it here. Hmm? Um, I said you have a cool house. Uh, yeah, I guess. Do you want to make a movie after dinner? What? I'm a filmmaker. I got a 3CCD Digicam and Final Cut Pro. We can do anything we want. Even chroma key. I got this huge green sheet we can hang up and put anything we want in the background. Uh, that sounds like fun. And the last theater my mom worked at let her take a bunch of costumes. We've got pirates and princesses. A few wild Indians. Costumes? Yeah, mom's a costume designer. It doesn't pay much, sure, but dad works steady. He's a writer, right? Yes and no. He's got six books, but the teaching is what keeps feeding us. Six books? You've got way more than that. I've never seen so many books outside the library. <laughs> Sorry, I mean he's written six books. Really? Yeah, the Dark Death series. Kind of goth with a dash of hard fantasy thrown in. They don't really sell very well. Your dad's an author? <laughs> Silly. My dad is Richard Stride. He uses a different name when he writes. Cause, whatever. You mean that book you gave me? With the sex scene on page 237? Yep. It was written by... Oh, Cass! <laughs> Come on. She wasn't kidding about making a movie. Her room was an old sleeping porch, she said. And that meant it was really long and thin. At one end was her bed, but at the other was a bunch of lights and a video camera. And the kind of computer I'd only seen in movies. And action. What do I do? Anything. You wanted to be a robot. Uh, beep. Beep. Beep? <laughs> oh, Mary, this is hysterical. We are totally YouTubing this. Oh, will anyone see it? You never know. You were the perfect robot. I'm calling you LOL from now on. Calling me what? LOL. Star Trek. TNG. You don't? Oh, come on. And that was the moment she gave me my name. I didn't even know who LOL was. So she sat me down in front of her TV and started rifling through these DVDs. And we watched Star Trek. I'd never seen it before, though I had read two or three of the books. This episode was a story of a robot that made a child, a daughter he named Lal. In Hindu, the name means beloved. We sat and watched the episode, and the sun began to set. And thank goodness Cass didn't bother to turn on the lights. She would have seen my tears. Beloved. If I closed my eyes really tight, I could almost believe it. I could almost believe this was my house. I could almost believe she was my sister and her parents were my parents. I could almost believe I was... beloved. After that, I decided to be called Lol all the time. I didn't tell my mother, of course. She wouldn't have understood. Or worse, she would have called it a phase and turned her back on me. She would go back to her sewing, humming songs written decades before she was born. Sometimes I'd sit with her in the sewing room and read, only books she'd approve of, of course. And she might ask me a question or two about something, but that was all the interest she'd show. She'd sit there in a dress she'd made herself, a bandana over her hair, singing old songs. It was like she didn't want to be in this century. And maybe when she was sewing like that, she wasn't. Years passed. Mom got used to me having a best friend, or at least I got used to her not approving. Cass and I went on vacations together, me, her, and her parents at the shore. You could ask, you know. That was when we were 14, and Cass was trying to get me to go to public school. I don't have any friends. You have lots of friends. You're pretty. You don't know what it's like. There's all the little cliques, and I don't fit in any of them. You could ask your mom, you know. But I had asked her. Do you want to go to public school now? These are hard years, Mary. Give it a year or two. 
Meanwhile, my little brother was already making headway into getting into fifth grade. He played hockey, and he already had a lot of friends. And besides... It's different for boys, my mother said, mysteriously. Why can't you just register? She was serious. It wouldn't be that big a deal. You don't know her. You don't know how big she is on this stuff. What stuff? Homeschool. So what? Does she think you're going to get pregnant and be a crack hoe in the first month? I just sat there, staring out at the water. I didn't know why Mom didn't want me in public school. Not really. There were vague explanations, but whenever I repeated them to Cass, they sounded so stupid. I looked up at Cass. Those blue eyes, usually so deep, were drilling right into me. I'd never seen her so mad. But she was stuffing it down, stuffing it deep inside. In a minute, I knew she'd turn to me with a bright smile and say something fun like, Let's get ice cream. And I'd believe that everything was okay. Because she was that good an actress. And because I really wanted to believe that everything was okay. I know. Let's bake brownies. And that was that. That trip was to her family's cabin, by the shore. We shared a bedroom, and we shared the only bed. We used to stay up late, trying to scare each other. Do you ever think there might really be vampires? I'm trying to sleep. No, really. Do you ever think that? Somewhere in the world, there might be real vampires? No, I don't. You've got no imagination. What does imagination have to do with it? There's either vampires or there isn't. Wishing doesn't change anything. I'm not wishing for vampires. I'm just saying. Well, what does my imagination have to do with whether or not something exists? Robot. Go to sleep. Beep, beep, beep. Hey, lol. What? Do you know what my dad does to my mom? Shut up. He beats her. No, he doesn't. They're happy. It's an act. She's in theater, right? It's all an act. See, when my mom was younger, she had an affair. He's never forgiven her. And he's jealous. Stop it. Some nights, I'll hear them arguing. Then, they won't be arguing anymore. Cassandra. Because he shut her up, you know? Please. You know what else? I think she kind of likes it now. I think she likes it when he shuts her up. Hey, what's wrong? Don't tell me this. I don't want to know this. Oh, what's wrong? You're shaking. It's not true. None of it's true. Your parents love each other, and they love you, and he never... Wait, wait, I'm sorry. It was just an act, I swear. What? You're really scared, aren't you? Lowell, I was just acting. Well, don't ever do it again. Oh, you'd rather be a vampire, eh? Stop it. (laughs) Come here, honey, I want to suck your blood. (laughs) (laughs) Later that night, I couldn't sleep. Cass was in the bed next to me, sleeping with her hair flowing like water all over the pillow. Like a girl from a vampire movie. Or what I thought a girl from a vampire movie would look like. The truth was, I'd never seen one. I got up and went to the window. The water was out there, black and cold and shimmering under a yellow moon. And I couldn't decide whether Cass was lying to me when she said her father beat her mom, or if she was lying to me when she said he didn't. One was truth, and one was a lie. Which was which? I heard something move on the bed behind me, and I turned to look. Cass was gone. I went to the door, but it was ajar about the same way it had been. Besides, I don't think she would have had time to get to the door. I looked to the closet and saw a thin line of her cotton nightgown through the barely open door. Then I followed the nightgown up to her face, and then... Something... Something was wrong. <laughs> Cass, what's wrong? You you don't look right. She was staring at me. Only it wasn't her. Not entirely, anyway. Those blue eyes didn't seem to glow anymore. They seemed to stand out like black pools in the gray darkness of the closet. She almost looked like the aliens on some book covers. Her eyes black and deep and without pupils. <laughs> Cass, please... Come into my closet, and I'll tell you all my secrets. Cass, this isn't funny. Who is Cass? I know not of any Cass. Stop it. Do you know the Muffin Man? He lives on Jury Lane. (laughs) Shh. You'll wake your parents. You can't wake what's already dead. (laughs) 
and then I was awake. I had woken up screaming, and the sun was shining through the windows, and Cass was next to me, still asleep. Have you ever had that? That weird thing when you close your eyes one night, and you open them a second later, and it's day? Just like that? I felt myself scream, but I didn't hear it. Maybe I didn't scream. Maybe I just imagined it, and imagined it so hard my throat hurt. And I didn't know what was real. This moment, the sun shining, the house quiet. Or the thing that came before it, Cass in the closet, beckoning me to come in, my heart thumping in my chest, and a word echoing in my ears. It was a strange word to think about on a bright summer morning. Strange and terrible and unreal. The word was... vampire. I don't know what the big deal is. Six months after the beach. Nothing weird had happened since then, except Cass had a boyfriend. Did you see the way his eyes open up wide when he smiles? He looks like Edward Cullen. You mean Robert Pattison, the actor? (sighs) Whatever, he looks just like him. He looked nothing like him, this boy. But he lived about a mile from my house. And Cass had it in her head that if she could have a sleepover at my place for a change... You'd never know I was gone. Your mom would know. Oh, yes, she would. She would know, and she would take you home, and she would call your mom. Who wouldn't care? And she would forbid us to see each other. Oh, lol. We'd see each other. Parents always think they can do stuff like that, but they can't. You can start school the next year, and then... I'm not going to public school in the fall. What? I changed my mind. I'm not going. The truth was, I wanted to go more than anything. But I was mad at her then. Furious. She was using me to get to Dan Biederman. Come on, at least ask. And I was right. My mother would not allow this. I knew she wouldn't. I knew it. Well, Cassandra's certainly a nice girl, and you've accepted her mother's hospitality enough. I felt a sensation in my stomach like vomit and acid. Maybe it would be nice to entertain her for a change. Oh, no. Why don't you invite her to supper, too? I looked up at my mother. Mary, are you all right? And I threw up all over my dress. The sleepover didn't happen, of course. Mother was concerned Cass might catch something. I was fine. I wasn't sick. I knew I wasn't sick. But that night, I woke up boiling hot. My nightgown was covered in sweat, and the sheets were in knots around me. The moon was out, and a blue light flooded through my window. When I looked into the shadows, it reminded me of Cass's eyes, that same shade of blue-black that seemed to draw me in. I got up and slipped off my nightgown. It was still hot, still so hot. I lay back down on the bed when... (gasps) Relax, it's me. She'd scared me to death. There she was, outside my window. Cass, with her dark blue eyes. I threw on a nightgown and ran over. What are you doing here? I told my mom the sleepover was still on. How are you feeling? You went to Dan Biederman's house, didn't you? Oh, he was being a jerk. I went to come see you. Let me in. What? You can't. No. My mom will find out. Come on, Lowell. Invite me in. Go home. I can't. It's like 20 miles. Well, then come down to the back door. I'll wake my mom, we'll tell her everything, and she'll give you a ride home. (laughs) I had heard that laugh before, but I couldn't remember where. Don't be stupid. Just invite me in. I took a step back from the window. I don't know why I did that. There was no reason for it. I just... Maybe I was remembering the beach house in the closet. Maybe I hadn't pushed it down into my mind like I thought I had. But there was something different about Cass. Something wrong. I stepped back away from the window and didn't say anything. She watched me for a moment. Well? That was all she said. Just my name. Just once. We stood there looking at each other for a long, long time. I don't even really remember when she left the window. It was just a moment when she wasn't there anymore. I went back to the bed and I lay down. It's funny how sometimes you can just forget things, how the simplest thing slips your mind. 
I walked into the kitchen once and suddenly couldn't remember which door led to the basement. I forgot how to spell the word the for five minutes. I came to the end of our drive and couldn't remember if town was to the right or to the left. Whenever that stuff happened to me, I always remembered again right away. It was just a temporary brain fart, as Cass's dad would say. It's just that sometimes I forget little things that I should remember. I forgot something that night, something I should have remembered from the beginning. Something so obvious and basic and terrible. I should have remembered right away. You see, I was so upset about Cass being there. So afraid my mom would find out, so weirded out by the whole thing, that I forgot a simple fact about the landscape of my life. Our house is a plain box structure with a peaked roof. There are no eaves, no ornamentation, no trees within 20 feet. My mother had a horrible fear of a windstorm knocking a tree into our house. And outside my window, the window where I just had a conversation with my best friend, my window that had no window box, no ledge, outside my window was a sheer drop of 30 feet. I was cold the rest of that night. I put my nightgown and the covers back on and another blanket besides, but I was still cold. That was good. They say cold aids the mind, and I did a lot of thinking. One eye peeled on my window, waiting for a face or the sun to fill it. And I thought about Cass, and about what she'd said. She'd been so eager for me to invite her in. She could have just climbed in. I wouldn't have stopped her. She should have known that. But that was the thing. She wanted me to invite her. She wanted me to invite her into my room. And about 6 a.m. I realized why that was important. You probably already know why. A vampire cannot enter a house by her own free will. She has to be invited. We didn't talk for weeks after that. I think she was tied up with Dan Biederman and I didn't care one way or the other. The cold came, winter, long nights, and finally, one day in January... Mary! Phone! I think it's Cassandra! Hello? Lol? Hi. Jeez, you might say hello. Hello, Cass. Hey, you wanna get together? It's been, like, forever. What about Dan? Dan? Oh, don't be silly. We were over weeks ago. I just... I miss you. Lol, is everything okay? Why don't you come over? Are you inviting me? Yes, I'm inviting you. Okay, let me check with my mom. Something changed in her voice. If I didn't know her quite as well, I probably would have missed it. But I heard the change. A kind of hunger came into it. She came over all right. In 20 minutes, she was at my doorway with a sleeping bag under her arm. Hi. Hi. I'm so sorry I was such a jerk. He totally wasn't worth it. That's okay. Never again, right? Never over a boy. Never over a boy. She came in. Had I invited her? I couldn't remember. But in five minutes, she was just like she'd always been. Bubbly, cheerful, laughing. And I was watching her. It was like I wasn't even in the room, like I'd left my body behind and was floating above us, watching, observing. I kept very, very still, like Cass was a bird that had landed next to me, and I was afraid she would fly away. Are you all right? What? You just seem really out of it. I'm just tired. Oh well, it's 9.30. Since we have no TV, I guess. Would you mind? No. I'll tell ghost stories, and maybe tell about Dan. Dan? You know. I mean, we were going out for two months. We got ready for bed. I said my goodnights to Mom. Cass's sleeping bag stayed rolled up in the corner. My bed was just big enough for the two of us to fit. And the second the lights went out... He really is good-looking, you know. And he was so nice. She began to talk. I let her talk about Dan, about the things they had done together. I suppose she expected me to be shocked. <laughs> You don't think I'm a slut, do you? No, I don't. And I didn't. I really didn't. Cass wasn't really a person to me anymore. 
So what she did with a boy didn't seem to matter. What she was a... Other option is there? I don't know what she was. Be. But as I listened well, to her no, prattle no, on, I began to get interested. It was like I rolled over and looked at her. Our faces were only inches apart, and, and she kept talking. That's what everyone does. And because she was so what close, I, I could really see her for the I'm first so... time. I could take my time and linger over her face. I'd never noticed before how her ears turned up slightly at the tips, how her cheeks and eyebrows were so thin and angular, and her teeth were... Were they just a little pointed? A little sharp? I couldn't tell. I really couldn't. Lol? Lol? Uh, what? <laughs> You're creeping me out. Uh, sorry. I, I was just... <laughs> you were looking at me like I was dessert. <laughs> That's what you were doing. You haven't gotten all Amazon cooped up in here, have you? Because I like you and everything, but... Cassandra, do you believe in vampires? What? Because I do. I've met one. Okay. Wait, I know what this is. One was in this room, almost. This is you trying to scare me for a change. But I wouldn't invite it in. That's right, isn't it? You have to invite a vampire in, or it can't enter. Well, you, you really did it. I'm really freaked out. So why don't... I kind of wished I'd invited her in, you know? Why don't we just turn the lights, okay? Because that's why those stories are so popular. Transformation. You can change. Do you believe in change, Cass? Turn on the lights, Lol. Do you think you can really, really become something else? Mary, turn on the lights. Because I believe, if you want it bad enough... Lol. Lol? <laughs> Mary! What have you done? Oh, look at the blood, Richards. Is your daughter under psychiatric care? No! Why would she... We've got to get this other one to emergency. Those wounds are deep. Were they playing a game or something? Oh, I don't know what they were doing. It was just a sleepover. Cassandra doesn't come around anymore. We don't really talk. In my new home... I can only have visitors from four to six. How are you today, Mary? Mom comes most days. Uh, I brought you some cookies, but they, they took them at the desk. They weren't sure how they would react with your medication. Mom pays a lot of attention to me now. On days she comes, I sleep really well. And I made you a new jumper, see? When she doesn't come, I spend most nights in a chair looking out my window. It's on the fourth floor, you know. I'm just... I'm so happy to see you, Mary. But I like Mom's visits. You know, don't you? You're my beloved. My beloved. They're my very favorite times. And I don't miss Cass at all. Well, maybe a little. Maybe just... Her flame.